Welcome back to Australia. I was saying to Sharon Taylor before, welcome to Australia. Now, you've been here for so many times, it this feels more like your second home now, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, it does, actually. I, I, and, and if it was my second home, I wouldn't be complaining. Yeah. Does that, is there something about it? Like, is there something you could put your finger on to say, you know, this is what I love about Australia. This is the, the thing I love about Australia. I can't. There's not like a. There's not like really a one a one thing, you know. But uh, but the, oddly enough, from what I do tend to find is that Australian culture seems a lot closer to what I'm used to being from America than say when I go to the UK or especially Europe or, or places like that, you know, where it starts getting quite different. But mm. I feel culturally there's there's actually a, 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 a large similarity between Australian culture and American culture in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. So I feel really comfortable when I come down here, you know, maybe because of that. You've obviously played um, like Christian Campbell in, in Supernatural. Yeah. Is this a genre that you like? Is, is sci-fi fantasy your thing? Or do you just kind of fall into it? Or? It's fine with me, you know what I mean? Whether it's my thing or not, I love it. It's, you know, it's a great genre to, uh, to be able to do work in because it, the, the plot lines are so interesting. Mm. You know the storylines are so interesting, mm. and and uh, and generally speaking, the characters sometimes become a little more interesting as well. Um, so you know, I mean, I love. I, I've always been a fan of that of of the fantasy you know genre uh, and sci-fi genre since I was a kid, especially since Star Wars came out. That's what really set it off for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I was in the seventies. I remember when we went to go see that. There was a line. I was probably seven, six or seven years old, or something like that. Maybe, maybe even younger. But, uh, but I, I remember very vividly that movie, walking out of the theater, and my life was changed. It was, it did, it affected my imagination. Yes, yeah. You know, that's really yeah. what it did. It was previous to seeing to seeing that movie. You know, my imagination leveled off at about there, and then after that, it was like there was no yeah. roof anymore. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it I really was blown did. away. It, was, uh, it, it really opened up. I mean, Star Wars is me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my room is full of stuff from left to right. Star Wars figures unopened. You know, so I am a little bit of a fan. Right on. But I mean, from seeing, I didn't actually get to see um, the original Star Wars in '77, but I got yeah. to see Empire Strikes Back when I was about ten. Um, and same, same thing. You know, it was from the moment I came out of that that, that theater, right. it was like, wow, this world could just go on forever. Yeah. What am I doing here? Yeah. You know, let's go, let's go use the force. You exactly. Know? It didn't open up such um, such new games for kids. You know, it used to be army men and cowboys and Indians. Yeah. But Star Wars came out, and it was suddenly. You know, Jedi lightsabers. I exactly. Mean, same it's, with you. It sort of took that, that. Yeah, and, and what's interesting too is it's sort of uh, in a new unit of time. It kind of updated the the idea of chivalry and of, of knighthood and uh, you know that yeah. kind of a thing of, of having a higher purpose and uh, being a you know a good person and, and serving a good purpose and all you know all of these kind of things. And, and yeah. I think a lot of our, uh, uh, our our film and television lacks that underlying feature. Yeah, you know what I mean, which is yeah. which is very important. You know, it's really important uh, because I, I know just from from what I got out of those kind of movies, even even the the uh, early Indiana Jones films and stuff. It's like you know those kind of uh, heroes. You know that, that that you have to look up to. You want to be like that person. Yeah. You know. And, yeah. And uh, and and that's you know that's that's really had a great effect on me, and, and especially with wanting to become an actor. You know, wanting to live those storylines myself and, and experience those fantasy worlds myself because I, I had a keen, my father's in the film business, uh, he's a production designer and was a set director when I was young. He, he was a production designer on Twister, The Saint, Shadow, T2, Patriot Games, uh, a, a whole list of things. Uh, uh, I really am glad recently, he just finished uh, the new Riddick, uh, they're doing Riddick, Riddick 3 will be coming out. Yeah. So he just uh, he just finished that up in uh, Montreal. So, so I, I, I knew from a young age what the process was of making film and stuff like that, and that, and that excited me more because I was like, okay, so they'll get me. Because normally I was used to like, you know, we me and my friends play into the woods, and we're trying to 
a hodgepodge some costume on to make us appear to be, you know, what we're pretending to be, whether it's like Dungeons and Dragons or Swords and Swords or whatever it is, or Vietnam or whatever we're playing that day. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and sticks are the guns or, you know, you break up everything and the, the gun stick becomes a sword and, <laughs> you know, and the trash can pail is the, is the shield and, yes. you know, and that was it. And, and, uh, and when I realized, wow, they'll, they'll, they'll give me the wardrobe, they'll give me the props, all this stuff, then they'll film it. They'll put it together and then they'll play it back and I can go and watch myself living a life that isn't my own. Yeah. That's what tripped me out. I yeah. was like, I have to do it. My dad actually, the, the film that really set me off was Goonies. My dad was a was art director on Goonies. And uh, and that was, the, that, you know, I was about 10 years old, 10 or 11 years old when that came out. And that was like, that was what sealed the deal for me. I was like, I got it. That's it. I got it. What's it like on the set? Like, give me a, just a, an analysis as to what it's like a day on the set of Supernatural. Is there... Practical Joker? Do they keep well, they're themselves? Always, no, no, no. They, they, uh, you know, Jared and Jensen are. I mean, they're they're always kind of you know joking around in, in in some respect in terms of just keeping things light, keeping the mood light. You know, I mean, when you when you work those kind of long hours and you know, and you're you know, especially if, if the day is behind and everybody got their lives. Because I mean, you know, in film and television, I don't think people realize that when you're actually in production, generally speaking, if you shoot a 12-hour day, you're getting really lucky. That means that you've you finished early. Wow. You know, so so normally you're talking about 14, 16 hours a day. You know, and then and that's every day you're working, every day you're working. So so basically, you have enough time to go home, work on the next day's material, get to sleep, and get up and do it again. And uh, and so that cycle can, over a period of years, can become a real grind on on people. You know, and, and especially on if you're on a series that's been going and going and going. At at a certain point, sometimes that can become you know, a point of contention almost on set, but, but it depends on the lead actors, and, and generally speaking, and, and, uh, and if they're happy, you yeah, know, yeah. And, they're, and they're just great guys, you know, straight up down to earth, just regular, you know, really approachable guys, and, and, uh, and they like to have a good time, and they, you know, and they like to, you know, uh, talk some smack, and, and, and make some jokes, and have a laugh, and, and, uh, and that helps everybody. Yeah. That helps, you know, everybody on set, you know, and, because uh, I've worked on other shows, uh, as a guest star, and the lead actors were not happy about being there, or not in a good mood, didn't treat people right, and the whole entire set becomes very tense. And yeah. you know, and in those circumstances, I mean, because I've been trained long enough, I know what what my job is. And at that point, is to walk on set, say my lines, do it right, and then go back to my trailer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. Don't, don't talk to anyone. Exactly. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just you know, just do my job, keep real low profile, and just you know what I mean. Yeah, and deliver. I think that was just one of those shows that basically could go on forever. Now, do you see it having a use by date? Do you see it kind of get coming to its end soon, or would you just be happy just to keep going? I mean, for me, I would love to 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 you know for my character to be picked back up on the show and to continue doing you know other episodes or whatever. It'd be great. I mean, I, I think it's a it's a top notch show and. Uh, uh, as far as the longevity of it, it's that's really the writing. It's really going to be in the writing and the enthusiasm of the actors to continue perpetuating those characters and the storylines and all of that, unless they do a spinoff. Yeah, yeah. You know, but which they could do a spinoff with a show like that for yeah, sure. Yeah. But really, it has to do with just you know the the, the writers. You know, how how far can the writers keep taking it and making it interesting and making it new and refreshing and yeah. and, and, and to keep pulling the audience along with them, mm. that's probably the hardest job.